Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Digital's Blitz, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of the biggest and most pressing issues I see formulating in the balancing department of World of Tanks Blitz, and it has to do with autoloaders. In update 9.1, the majority of autoloaders in Blitz became a heck of a lot deadlier. The Kranvong got one second shaved off of its intraclip, which is pretty big, and a vehicle like the 4005 not only got a shorter intraclip and more clipping potential, but then was able to keep its shell reload boost consumable, making it able to deal upwards of 1600 damage in four and a half seconds. Vehicles like the TVP now have a shorter intraclip. Vehicles like the 57 Heavy now carry shell reload boost. Vehicles like the Bat Chat now carry shell reload boost. And it's at a point where almost all autoloaders are just absolute beasts compared to a lot of their single shot counterparts. Now there are some great single shot vehicles out there still. For example, if you drive, let's say a 60 TP, you've got alpha, haul down capabilities, mobility. If you drive a 5A, you've got DPM. But how many times are you gonna be in a 5A and then some 4005 that you can't see uses speed boost, YOLOs you, presses his uh, shell reload boost ability and just absolutely nukes your gameplay. And that's the biggest problem I'm starting to see with Blitz lately, is with these autoloaders, the games are just becoming shorter and shorter. Three of the tanks, just on medium side here, are autoloaders on our team. That's quite a big chunk when you think about it as well. In fact, if we notice that the enemy tank destroyers are most likely pushing towards B and A, I might just be able to drive this 4005 right up towards this bat chat, put on shell reload boost, and full clip him. And that's actually what I might just try and do. I know it's a little risky, but if I can literally get away with a push, I, I mean, it's it's just free damage. So let's just keep on going. There's the Leopard 1, and here we go. Keep on going, keep on going. Here we go, shell reload boost. There's one shell into the Leopard, two shells into the Leopard, three shells into the Leopard, and dead. There you go. That, that is literally a full health, tier 10 medium, dead in just a couple seconds with the 4005. And now, we just reload the clip, we stay in cover, and we're completely safe. Now, I'm not sure exactly how much we took off of the Leopard, but I would easily say upwards of maybe... 1400, 1500, just in that short amount of time. Now we've got a vehicle like the 183, or even a better example. We got the T1084 right here that we can clear. And then if that enemy 60 TP happens to back up, or even better yet, we aim at this enemy 183. There's one shell into the 183, two shells into the 183. And you know what the best part is? Because I got Spall Liner, I know that 183 can't even kill me. And judging that he's one of, he's only one of three vehicles left, didn't even matter. I, I literally can trade all of my health, get the 183 to fire, kill him and uh, not even care. Now we just reload our clip one more time. Seven more seconds to go. I'm gonna make sure that that 60 TP is not looking at me. Here we go, let's wait for them to back up. And perfect, okay, let's start going. There's one shell into the rear of the 60. There's two shells into the 60. Here's three shells into the 60. And even if he kills me, I could care less. We already did 3,300 damage. And if we had been able to get out that shell, it would have been upwards of 37, 3,800 damage. This is just a perfect example of how the 4005 is able to absolutely demolish an enemy flank. Think about it, I YOLO'd in a tank destroyer that has 15 millimeters of turret armor and was able to basically full clip the Leopard 1 and then not even care about the 183 shooting me and then take another 1200 off of the 60 TP and if I had waited a little bit longer, I probably could have gotten the whole clip off because I could have gotten my shell reload boost back. But it doesn't matter. That's still 3,300 damage dealt, which is quite a bit when you think about it. That's top on our team. And again, I'm a tank destroyer frontlining. So let's see exactly how much damage we were able to deal. The Leopard 1 we took 1,200 off of. And the 60 TP we took 1,200 off of. The only vehicle that we really didn't get a lot of damage on was the, uh, the E4. Even the 183 we took 800 off of. And we got a really unfortunate bounce on his vehicle as well. And that was another reason why we didn't do 4K. So overall, I mean, we did pretty dang good for zero effort put in. And that just shows you the stupidity, in my opinion, of the auto-loading meta. Autoloaders are always strong because you have the ability to stay in cover, reload your clip, and then go back out and just burst all the damage. However, now that autoloaders have the ability to carry armor, mobility, DPM, plus an insane clip, I mean, think about it. If we think of the Bat Chat, it not only has great DPM now, 
great mobility. It got buffed on the view range. It has spall liner, but as well, it has shell reload boost. So the bat chat has everything going for it now. Look at the TVP. Four shell clip, it's able to get all of it out in a four and a half seconds, does 1230 damage, and its dispersion after shot is so good that it will fully aim in as soon as you fired, which is insane. The T57 Heavy has over 3000 DPM, and this is a heavy tank, also pretty decent armor now. It's also got great penetration and even still pretty dang good accuracy. Uh, the 50B has a four shell autoloader, making it incredibly deadly, especially against enemies that don't understand how to counter it. How many tanks are there that are just this amazing in tier 10? For example, there's a 183 right in front of me, and we are going to get one shell into the 183, two shells into the 183, and he heshes me, but we still take 1,200 off of him. Now, honestly, I'm not even counting that hash towards me. That's honestly not fair. Like, that guy literally got a perfect shell underneath my gun. That doesn't happen, and we obviously know that that was completely luck-based on that guy hitting that shell, so... That, I can't really say much about. That's just wargaming giving me bad luck as usual. Now, we got the AMX M4 off to the side, and, well, there's one shell into his vehicle. Let's go for two shells. Oh, that's a rip. That shell grazed him by, like, an inch on uh, his chinny-chin-chin. Chin. But that's fine, because we already have our clip loaded in another 10 seconds. I'm just going to jump off here. Perfect. Didn't lose any health. And what I'm going to try and do is overlook the... Mm, I'm trying to figure out the smartest way to get there. That player is a decent distance away. And I'm hoping that I'm not spotted. Okay, I'm not. Perfect. I wanted to get right over here. That way, if the enemy decides to position themselves poorly... Well, you know what? We're spotted. Interesting. I don't actually know how I got spotted, but it, it doesn't matter too much. They only have four vehicles left, and that's all four of them. So I just need to figure out how I want to deal with their vehicles. Now, our E100's over here. We got the 183 off to the side, and we know the IS-7's in the back. The uh, 183 is a possible clip, but I really want to try and take out this enemy IS-7. I think that that might be the smartest decision I can currently make. So that's exactly what I'm going to try and do. There's one shell into the IS-7, two shells into the IS-7, and dead. There you go. 394 to deal 1,200 into his tank. Again, just absolutely stupid. But hey, we're not done yet. Let's reload our clip one more time. We got 10 seconds to go. We know that the 183 is off to the side. And I'm hoping that our E50M is going to at least distract the 183. That way I can take advantage of him. But now that the... Uh, E50M fired, that 183 is probably going to be looking towards that side of the map, which means I can very easily drive over here. Keep on going, keep on going, 183 fire. There's one shell into his vehicle. Let's get a shot into him one more time, because why not? And... Ooh, boop. Oh, doesn't pen. Oh, well, guess I'll just back up again. Perfect example of the 57 Heavy just making a mockery of the enemy team. Ten more seconds to go. Now, it's very possible that this IS-4 will kill me, but... I don't care. I'll just pretend I have a shell at this point. We'll see if he pokes me. Come on. Oh, he does. And he actually instantly snaps it as well. We got really unfortunate, as I said at the beginning of the battle. I mean, it was really unfortunate that we did end up getting hit by that Hess shell when it came to the 183. That really normally doesn't happen. But even with having literally half of our health taken away from a stupid roll, we still were easily able to make our impact on the battle and showcase, again, just where Shell Reload Boost and the 57 Heavy in general is just another amazing autoloader. And I see almost all the autoloaders like this. We didn't do a crazy amount of damage, but we didn't do bad at all. We did 2,800 damage for a game that, again, I put literally zero effort into. And at this point in Blitz, there are so many tier 10 autoloaders out there that are all strong in their own rights. Now, I wanted to do one last battle showcasing, in my opinion, one of the best out of all the bunch, and that is the M6 Yo. Now, the M6 Yo carries a two-shot gun or a three-shot gun. Now, I am the two shot and wargaming gave the m6 show two options of insane capabilities they gave it the option of okay if you're running the two shot then you can put on reticle cali which i have here or if you're running the three shot then you can run shell reload boost now to me i think the two shots better because the two shot lets you barely expose your vehicle and in a matter of 1.7 seconds deal 900 damage that is insane there's not a single tank in tier 10 that can do that apart from tank destroyers. There's no there's no medium that can deal that. It takes the TVP about three seconds to deal that, which is double this time. So yeah, the Yo is a pretty insane vehicle. Now I'm gonna let my teammate capture that base. And while that's going on, I'm gonna sit right here and detect anybody that tries poking. Because again, 
I can do that. If somebody pokes this bush and I have the ability just to get one shell out, that's still 450 damage. It appears that our Kranvong has not spotted anybody, which gives me a very clear idea that the majority of the enemy team is off towards this side of the map, which is definitely something I have to be very cautious about. We got the IS-7 over here, we got the grill in the back, we also got the Type 71 over here. I'm just gonna back up. Hopefully I can maybe bait one of these players around the corner. Oh, there's the IS-7. But again, if anything drives over the hill, I've got Shell uh, or Reticle Cali, which means I can just instantly badonk and badonk. So we got the 5A. We still got the IS-7 over here, and he's going for it. There's one shell into his track wheel, two shells into his track wheel, and we back up. That is 915 hit points we took off that IS-7. And in return, I have bled zero. Now, unfortunately, our Kampf Panzer is not being incredibly intelligent in his current positioning. And our heavies really need to get over here if we want to have a chance. But again, two more seconds left. Here we go. Three, two, one, and... Get one shell into the type. Two shells into the type. That's 810 hit points. There goes the type 71. He's no longer going to poke. Also, that IS-7, two shots and he'll be dead. So I can just kind of chill here, you know. Enjoy the view. We got seven more seconds, then we'll just drive on up to him and clear him. Seven, six, five. And I already know how I'm going to do this as well. I'm just going to drive up this hill right here, which you're going to watch me do. We're going to get one shell into the IS-7. And two shells. There you go. IS-7's dead. We've already dealt 2,500 damage, and I have bled in total... 500? I mean, it's just such a stupid tank. And this is the auto-loading meta. This is all I see the auto-loading meta is. It's just, oh look, my tank can deal more damage than yours in a shorter amount of time than yours, so it does more. Look at this, 5A shoots me for 489. I shoot him for 996. And, uh, and there you go, now I just back up. And if he pushes me, I got a 1-2-1 one, one covering me. There you go, he's dead. Bye-bye. And it's not like the O has bad DPM either. It actually sits at around 25, 2600 DPM, which is just about average for a heavy tank. So we just reload. Three more seconds to go. Two, one, and... Well, I'm not even going to bother shooting that guy. He's already a gunner. Let's just make our way towards the Waffenträger. We could also go for this, uh, this TVP over here, possibly. I'm just trying to pick and choose the correct options. And I'm not really sure, but uh, I really want to go for this TVP. Well, they're all kind of dead at this point. Let's just get a shell into the waffle, and then we can also maybe get a shell into the TVP. Fire! Ah, well, we're still at 3,800 damage. I mean, at this point, it really doesn't matter. And, uh, that's literally... It, it's just the auto-loading meta. I can tell you without a doubt that playing in auto-loaders gives you a massive advantage as long as you understand how to use them over your single-shot counterparts. Because, literally, how do you counter a yo? How do you counter a vehicle that every time you poke, if it has shells loaded, can take 900 off of you? There is no way. I mean, the enemy team tried to. Now, obviously, they didn't play to the fullest extent of what they could, but I still could have just poked them, traded 450 hit points to the IS-7, which I did, and then take off all the health. To me, I still believe that autoloaders are completely dominant in the meta of Blitz, and I think right now, Wargaming has pushed them way too far. I think they deal way too much damage too fast, and it, it is definitely hurting the meta of the game. You don't want battles to be over before they even start, because your Sheridan pushes medium side and then gets clipped by a TVP and instantly dies. I don't want to watch my heavy tank poke Castilla Hill and instantly die from a 4005 clipping it out. To me... It takes away the fun of the game. Now, obviously, I might be one to think that, but to me, I just don't really like the auto-loading meta. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, but I, I really think Wargaming needs to kind of slow down the clips. Maybe they can keep the DPM the same, just make it so they don't deal as much damage as quickly. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.